Today we are going to get a little bit into the difference between a public address amplifier and a normal amplifier from home or, or car use. Let's get into it. I have uh, this very old amplifier for public address. It still has a cassette player. We are going to install a Bluetooth MP3 model like this. All of the inputs are mono, are not stereo. We are going to see why in a moment. But this is, even that this is very old, it's not like they are not, they are not making them anymore because they are still widely using factories, uh, supermarket. Here we have it, is the, the inside of the amplifier. As you can see, it has two big transformers. Let's dig a little bit into it. Here you can see the, the front and the back. In the back, we have these normal speakers or low impedance speakers like the, the, the ones you use in your home or, or car. And also you have a high voltage output. This is uh, marked as 100 volt and 70 volts. They are also for 20 or something like that. And also it has a DC input in case you want to use it in your car. You put two batteries in series and you can power the amplifier with DC power. Let's go back a little bit into history. There was a current war long time ago between Thomas Alva Edison and Nikola Tesla because Edison wanted to transmit the power, the electrical power to the home grid using direct current. And Nikola Tesla wanted to do it using alternating current. As you may guess now, Nikola Tesla won. Because alternating current is very easy to step up with a transformer. You can transmit it a very long range of, of wires over the nation and then step it down at the house. And that way you have uh, lower voltage with higher current with alternator current you cannot do the same with DC current uh, with DC voltage that's why these kind of amplifiers use the same principle that the, the amplifier stepped up the voltage of the music to 70 or, or 100 volts the, that way you can transmit it over 30 feet, 50 feet, 1,000 feet of wire to many, many speakers and then step it down at the speaker with another transformer and select the wattage you want for that particular speaker because depending on how much you are going to reduce those 100 volts or 70 volts is how much current you are going to gain at the end. So the modification that we are going to make to this amplifier is that we are going to use this auxiliary input in order to connect a Bluetooth model. Currently it has this cassette player, but we are not going to use the input of the cassette player because it's, it has very low impedance and it's going to sound very, very low. So internally we are going to connect the Bluetooth model into this auxiliary input. We are not going to use the jack anymore, so we just remove the cassette player, install the Bluetooth model, and connect it to the auxiliary input. So let's see the difference between a typical amplifier and the public address amplifier. As you can see, the output or the stage output of the typical amplifier is a MOSFET or a transistor. You can see that speakers are directly connected to the transistor or sometimes they connect it to a capacitor before it be in order to filter DC. In the PA amplifier, it, this is not happening like that because they, the stage output of the transistor gets connected to an output transformer and then it gets amplified to 100 volts or 70 volts in order to be transmitted. So that's the main difference that they output stage of the amplifier in one case is the transistors and in the PA amplifier is the transformer. So let's take a look inside this amplifier to see the real components on it. And as you can see, it has two transformers, but this is the one of the output stage. As you can see, it has the ground, 4 ohms, 8 ohms, 60 volts for, uh, for a speaker output of low impedance. And then it has the 70 volts and 100 volts for, the, for transmitting the 
the speaker sound to long distances. This is the schematic of this particular uh, amplifier. Here you can see the input. Uh, down here is the power supply, as any typical amplifi uh, amplifier. Here is the cassette player circuit. Here at the middle is the the preamplifier because the input board has the mixing and here is the preamplification stage and then the main amplifier is up here as you can see a bunch of transistors and right here is the transformer and this part below the transformer i don't know what it is uh, the, the schematic is not very clear okay moving on now we are going to talk about how to connect the speakers. In a typical amplifier, we have the speakers, each speaker has a certain resistance. So if we connect them in series, the total resistance will be the sum of the first resistor or a speaker plus the second one and the third one and so on. And that will, the sum of all those resistance are going to give you the total resistance of the circuit. So in some amplifiers, if the speaker output should be for 8 ohms and you have a speakers of 4 ohms you can put two speakers in series and it will give you a total of 8 ohm but if you connect the speakers in parallel then you have to divide the impedance of the speaker so let's see let's say you have two speakers of 4 ohms h1 and your amplifier requires 2 ohms so you put it in parallel and then the total circuit will be 2 ohms. So no matter what you do, if the amplifier tells you, the typical amplifier will tell you that I require 8 ohms or in each of the outputs, it can have 9 output outputs, 1, 3, 4, I don't know, depending on the type of amplifier, a home theater or, or, or a big concert uh, sp uh, amplifier. Each output of the amplifier will have a specific ohms to be connected to that output. That does not happen with the PA speaker. In the PA speaker, you can put as many speakers as you want. Well, there is a limit for everything, but it's not close to 10 or 20. Uh, but you are not going to create series with that, or you don't worry about that. You are going to put everything in parallel but each speaker will have a transformer, as we said before, and in that transformer, you are going to select the inputs of the speaker, depending on the wattage you want to use in that, par that particular speaker. And that's why these kind of systems are very widely used in large rooms, in uh, schools, in supermarkets, uh, factories, and things like that. So this is the MP3 player we are going to use. I believe it was designed for cars because it has a 12 volt input. But uh, I noticed that also it has a 5 volt regulator inside the, the device. So I was thinking I can remove this rectifier and inject 5 volts directly into it because I have many power supplies for 5 volts but not many for 12 volts. So I can install a 5 volt re power supply inside the amplifier and fit this module with that. So this is the after, before the modification. We are going to remove the unit and we are going to install the MP3 module and it's, it's going to look like this. So I'm going to use the faceplate of the cassette player in, or, in order to mount this. So. Another problem I find is that the module is, fa is stereo, but the amplifier is mono. So I'm going to create this circuit when using two, 250 capacit capacitors. I'm going to mix the two outputs, left and right, into one input and inject it into the amplifier. And the ground will be the ground, the, it's the same for both of them. And that way I can have the uh, mix, mix signals for the same input. So a quick tour inside the unit. Uh, here is the output transistors that goes connected to this transformer. Here are the signals and the low impedance ones and the high voltage output. 
As you can see, the low outputs and the high outputs are fitting from the same transformer. You get the output from the transistors into this transformer, and here you see it has the common 4 ohms, 8 ohms, 60 volt ohms, and also the 170 volts output. These are the wires coming from the transistor, and this is small wire. I don't know what is that for. I don't know. I believe it's a low, low impedance signal. I'm not sure. I'm not getting too deep into this. As you can see, the power supply has only one capacitor. Yeah. That's pretty strange. And then we have this is the input board. Here are the, all the one four jacks. The mixing board with all the potentiometers. And also we have the cassette player. As you can see, it is connected here. We are not going to use that input. I use it, but the MP3 player sounds very, very low. So I am going to use the auxiliary input, but here is the connection. Pretty simple. It is a stereo, but they just connected the left and right together and that's it. They didn't use any mixing capacitors. This is the board I told you. I don't know what is that for. There, the cassette is connected to there, but again, I tried to pull the 12 volt from here and even that it powers the Bluetooth unit, it, it make a horrible sound. So I'm going to remove the cassette player. We are not going to need anything from a cassette player, not even the input, but the faceplate. Well, that's not saying anything, but we are going to use the, the faceplate of the cassette player in order to mount the MP3 player. So I'm going to do a very quick test. I'm using a 12 volt power supply, but later on, I'm going to remove the 5 volt rectifier and use a, a 5 volt power supply for it. But let me see if you can hear anything from here. That that you just heard was with the cassette player input, a lot of noise in the, I need to clean the potentiometer and using the 12 volt power supply. So my technique to blend two plastic is to melt them together because that way, as soon as it get uh, cold, it's going to be locked in place. I'm not going to use epoxy because it takes time to dry and if you don't get it right, it's going to be separate with the time. So, I'm just going to melt the plastic. You have to melt the plastic that you are adding on the, and both plastic, the one you are attached to the other, both plastic has to be melted uh, so it can create a strong bond together. So here we have it. This is the mixing circuit. Here is the MP3 model mounted on the cassette player bracket. Here is the input for the cassette player connected to the mixing circuit. 250 uh, microfarads for the capacitors. And also I need to connect the power. Again, I removed the 5 volt rectifier. So I'm going to be using a 5 volt power supply connected internally in the amplifier. So this is the rectifier. The pin at the right is the 5 volt input and the pin at the left is the 12 volt input. So it's going to lower the, the 12 volt into 5 volts. So I connected this wire to this power supply and the AC input of the power supply is connected to the fuse and also to the switch of the amplifier. So in that way, whenever I plug the amplifier, and turn on the switch, the Bluetooth model will turn on automatically. 
and here you have it for, for the first time. It sounds very, very low. It, the Bluetooth model has a volume up and equalizer and things like that, but even with the, all the power up, or the volume up, it doesn't sound too much. So I'm going to move it into the auxiliary input of the amplifier in order to get better, better sound. So here it is connected to the aux input. So we are wasting this jack, but let's hear it out with the aux. much much higher sound now let's connect it to the a pa speaker because right now it is to connect it to a low impedance speaker let's put it into the pa speaker So there you have it, uh, a PA amplifier. For me, it's the first time I, I touched one of these things. <laughs> I didn't know how it works. I just buy it just to see how uh, it was inside because I, I was very curious about the difference with a normal, normal amplifier. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you very much for liking my videos, disliking, commenting, and all the stuff. I'm sorry for the comments I'm not replying to. Uh, sometimes YouTube filters some of the comments, and I don't realize that they are in another place on the YouTube studio. So uh, I just found that there's another section for the comments I haven't replied, and it has hundreds of of comments uh, from months and months ago. So I'm sorry for those comments. I cannot respond, but I hope the community helps each other to respond in those comments that I didn't or I cannot respond. Thank you very much and take care. Bye.